Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to show you five essential networking commands that work on Linux and on Mac OS and on Windows. So let's just jump straight into it. Here you can see I've got four windows open. The top two here are Linux uh, machines. They're both Raspberry Pis. And then down here in the orange in the left-hand corner, I have a Mac running. And here on the right-hand side is a command prompt on a Windows PC. So the first command I want to cover is how you find out the IP address of your machine. So we'll start with Linux up here in the top left hand corner. Let's type in IP Adra for address show. So that's how you find out the IP address. And when you hit that, it tells us here there are two interfaces, loopback, which is basically an interface that lets it just talk to itself. It can't talk to anybody else. And then the wireless LAN. So WLAN zero is the wireless adapter in this um, Raspberry Pi. And there are two addresses here that we want to look at today. There's this one, which is 192.168.1.36, and that's called an IPv4 address. It's a 32-bit address made up of four bytes. And the second address is this one here, and this is a 128-bit address, which is for IPv6. So we basically we run out of IPv4 addresses, and IPv6 is going to be replacing it. And of course, with 128 bits, that should be enough addresses to keep us going for just a little while. Now, I want to just repeat the same command over here because I'm going to need these addresses uh, in a moment. So we do IP show there. Now, down here on the Mac, you do the same thing by typing IF config, and that will list all the addresses. Now, on this particular Mac, the important one is this one here, EN0. That's the name of the device. And again, we can see here there is a IPv4 address. That's 1681.2. And there's also a uh, IPv6 address here. And that's this one here. And notice this one ends in this percent %EN0. You don't see that up here on the Raspberry Pi one. This one just goes straight across to the end there. Now we'll talk about this percent %EN0 in just a moment. And then finally on Windows, I want to do the same thing. And here you type IP config. It was IF config on the Mac. And again, if we scroll up here to the very first one, we'll see here that I have uh, an IP4 address, 192.168.1.171. And the uh, IPv6 address, FE80, and that one there. And again, notice the percent sign at the end, percent 16. And as I said, we'll deal with that in just a moment. So that's how you can find out both the IPv4 and the IPv6 addresses on Linux, on Mac, and on Windows. Okay, let's go on to our second command. And the second command is a command called ping. Now, ping is a great command because what it allows you to do is send a message to another host to see whether it's alive, if it's up and running. And if it is, it does a pong. It kind of re replies back saying, yes, I'm here. So if we go to this Raspberry Pi here in the top left-hand corner, we can say ping, and I'm going to ping this one here, this one on the right-hand side. So look, we know that's the address there. So we'll just copy that across. Ping 192.168.1.31. And we hit enter, and it's saying sending 64 bits, and by it, it's actually getting replies back from that address. And we just hit Control c there to stop it. And in fact, we can do the same thing down here on the Mac. We can say ping and then the same thing. And again, we're seeing that it's it's alive and we're getting the replies. And we can do the same thing on Windows. We can type in here ping 192.168.1.31. And it says reply from, again, showing us that it is alive. So that's great. That's how you ping an IP fee v4 address but what happens if i want to ping it over ipv6 because this is still a valid way of connecting from one machine to another so on linux what you do is you type the word ping but then put a six at the end ping six okay and then we are going to uh, ping the ip address the ipv6 address of this raspberry pi here in the corner but you have to do one thing you have to tell uh, the machine which interface to use while it's doing that ping because uh, every interface has its own set of addresses and it can't really tell necessarily which interface it should use. And so you use this percent sign that we noticed earlier on. And in this case, on this Linux box, we type WLAN0 saying, please use the wireless LAN to ping 
this other Raspberry Pi. And so it will do that. And again, we get back saying uh, there are replies from that address. And we can do the same thing here on the Mac. And what we do there is we do ping six again and we paste in the same address there. But now if you remember, we want to use percent en zero because that's the interface that's defined here on this Mac. And we saw that earlier on. So we'll do that. And this is great saying it's getting a reply back from the uh, Raspberry Pi, that's great. And then here on Windows, what you do is you do ping minus six. Okay, now the thing to remember on here is when we looked up here at the top, we found out the IP address, we saw this percent 16 at the end. So that's the interface number as far as Windows is concerned. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, cut and paste in this address and we put percent 16 at the end, telling it to use that interface. Okay, and there you go. It's getting a reply back from that Raspberry Pi. So there we've had all three machines and been able to ping one another on IPv4 and on IPv6. Now the next command I want to show you is a command that allows you to see which services are running on a remote machine. Now this tool we're gonna to use is called Nmap. Okay, and it's available on Linux and on Mac OS and on Windows. I'm just gonna show it to you running on Linux because it's easy to install. In fact, it already, it's just a, you know, you do an app to get and it's installed. The other ones, you have to go to the website and download it and install it. So, but it's exactly the same on each of the operating systems. And again, we do the same thing. If I do 192.168.1.31, what that will do now is it will scan that other Raspberry Pi, and it goes, yep, this Raspberry Pi has only got one port open, and that is Secure Shell, and we're gonna talk about Secure Shell in a moment. And we can also do an Nmap over IPv6, so it's Nmap, but now we use minus six to tell it to use V6. We paste in that address, and don't forget the percent WLAN zero, tell it to use the wireless LAN to connect to that machine, please. It starts its scan, and look, there's the same thing. Port 22 Secure Shell is open both on IPv4 and on IPv6, and you can do exactly the same on Mac OS and on Windows, but you have to install that software separately, uh, and you can just find that, look up Nmap, I think it's nmap.org, that will give you the address for those downloads. Okay, our fourth command is actually gonna be this secure shell. So we saw secure shell there. Secure shell allows me to open up a command line, a shell on a remote machine. So I can actually do now secure shell, and the user on this other Raspberry Pi is called Pi, so I do Pi at 192.168.1.31, which means it will connect from this machine over here to this machine. So let's just hit enter, and also we'll ask for the password, which I type in, and there we go, I've now got a uh, connection across, you can see here, look, Pi at Gary hyphen Pi one, Pi at Gary hyphen Pi one, both exactly the, the same machine. So I'm now connected remotely from this window across to this window and control D will exit from there. And now you can see we're at Pi at a Raspberry Pi zero W. Now we can do exactly the same thing now over uh, IPv6. So we do secure shell minus uh, six, and then we cut a, uh, paste this address like we've done before. We say percent WLAN zero, and then we go. It's asking me now for the password, and we can do it. And there you go, you see it runs the same. Now we can do that, for example, exactly the same from the Mac here. So we do secure shell minus six pi at, and then we copy that address, and then don't forget we need to use the percent en zero to tell it which uh, adapter to use. And that will now ask me for the password. So we type that in, and there we go. Now we're connected from here down here, all the way up to this machine up here over IPv6. Now we can also do the same thing on Windows. Uh, if you've got Windows 10 and you've got a, a latest version from at least spring 2018, uh, Open uh, uh, SSH is actually built into Windows, so we can do secure shell, and then the same thing, 192.168.1. Dot 31, let's stick pi at the beginning there because that's the name of the user. And the same thing, we will be asked to, uh, to type in the password. Fantastic, let's try it over v6. So we do secure shell minus six, pi at, cut in that address, and then percent 16, if you remember from earlier on, that's the name of the interface. Okay, it's now asking me for the password. 
And there we go, I've now connected from here, from the Windows machine, up here to this uh, Linux machine. And we can log out there, and we can log out there. So there you go, that was our fourth command, and that was Secure Shell. Now the fifth and final command for today is related to Secure Shell, it's actually Secure Copy. And what it basically does, it allows you to copy files from one machine to another using that Secure Shell interface. So here it's SCP, so let's say SCP, and I've got a file here called uh, 10 megabyte file, and we want to copy it to, and then you need to use the login details, pi at 192.168.1.31. And then at the end of it, you put a colon, and then you specify where you want to copy it to. And I'm just going to say to the current root, to the current directory, which will be the login directory, which means that the home directory. So let's just run that. It's now asking, do we is do we trust that address? Yes. And then we type in the password, and now it starts to copy over the file. And there it is. And then over here now we can do an ls minus lh. 10 megabyte file and there it is it's just been copied over now you can do exactly the same thing from windows and from mac os but what we'll do now from mac os is we'll do it over ipv6 so you do the minus six again pi at now here's the interesting thing if you notice at the end of this one we had to put a colon and then tell it where we wanted to uh, copy the file so that was here that had that colon in there like that now because ipv6 addresses are all full of colons that can be a bit confusing for the secure shell pro um, secure copy program so what you do is you put square brackets then you put in the uh, ipv6 address including the uh, adapter number, then you close the square brackets, then we can put our colon and our dot. Okay, and of course I haven't specified the file I want to copy, so let's just put that in there, 10 megabyte file three. Okay, and it's asking us now for the password. And there we go, that file starts getting copied over. And then over here on this one now, we can do an LH minus LA 10 megabyte file three. And there it is, it's just been copied over LA LS minus LH, there you go, 10 megabyte file. And it's exactly the same on Windows, you can do exactly the same thing. We can say SCP and also 10 megabyte file two, uh, and then we'll just do pi at uh, 192.168.1.31, and then we wanna put it in the login directory and it asks us the password and there we go, that file starts being copied. So there you go. You actually find that on the command line, you can do very similar things between Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. So we looked at how to get the IP address. We looked at how to do a ping to make sure a node was alive. We saw how to use Nmap to see which ports were open. We saw how to use Secure Shell so you can log in from one system to another. And we saw how to use Secure Copy over that Secure Shell connection to copy files from one machine to another. Okay, thanks very much. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.